Hello everyone and welcome to my talk on testing and analysis of wire and arc additively manufactured stainless steel. My name's Leroy Gardner from Imperial College London and my co-authors here are Penelope Cavalu, Harry Slack, Craig Buchanan and Eamon Waddy. So I'll start off by giving a brief introduction to WAM and how we produced the test specimens. I'll talk about how we measured the specimen geometry and then the material testing and the analysis of the results. So 3D printing or additive manufacturing can generally be defined as the process of making a physical object from a 3D digital model, typically by the deposition of successive layers of material. It's one of the fastest growing methods of manufacturing. You can print almost any geometry and the range of applications is expanding rapidly. And I think there's huge potential for the steel construction industry. So wire and arc additive manufacturing or WAM in particular is a method of 3D printing that uses traditional welding technology in conjunction with robotic control. It's relatively low cost, both in terms of the, the hardware and the input material, which is welding wire. And you have the ability to produce large parts and that makes it well suited to the construction industry. Research is needed to assess the variability of the geometric and mechanical properties of WAM objects, as well as looking at the link between the printing parameters and the response of the printed objects. And a contribution to this is presented in this paper. Now we conducted 51 tests on WAM stainless steel coupons to examine the stress strain response, look at the geometry and identify if there's any anisotropy influence from the uh, printed undulations and so on. As 19 of the coupons had a nominal thickness of 3.5 millimeters, 20 had a nominal thickness of 8 millimeters and 12 of the coupons were machined down to remove the undulating surface finish. So the coupons were printed by the Dutch company MX3D. They used MIG welding via a six axis robotic welding arm. Printing speed was up to two kilometers per hour and the material is austenitic stainless steel. You can see here some of the key printing parameters. So for the 3.5 uh, nominal thickness material, 1.0 millimeter welding wire was used. And you can see there the welding speed and the wire feed rate. For the thicker material, larger diameter input wire was used and the welding speed was reduced down. This video shows the, the WAM process used to print these uh, coupons. So you can see the material being produced layer by layer following the geometry given by the uh, geometric model. And you can see that it's essentially a traditional uh, welding machine controlled by a robotic arm. Now it was important to determine the geometry of the coupons that were produced. So this was done using 3D laser scanning with a Faro scan arm that produced a point cloud, which was converted into a polygonal mesh and then a 3D CAD model. This was then analyzed to look at the variability in geometric properties and the change in properties with direction. You can see just a couple of examples of some average results here. So in the table, if we look at the far right hand column, you can see the standard deviation of the thickness of each coupon within the parallel length divided by the average thickness of that coupon. And you can see that there's higher variability as you move from zero degrees where you're pulling along the length of the welding direction up to the maximum variation at 90 degrees where you're pulling across the welding direction. And similarly, if you look at the second to right column, you can see the minimum thickness relative to the mean thickness. And again, 
moving from 0 to 90 degrees, you start to have bigger reductions. So the mean, the minimum thickness is least in the 90 degree direction. So moving on to the material testing. So we wanted to determine the basic material stress strain characteristics. We did this via tensile coupon tests and then the obtained stress strain curves were fitted using the two stage ramberg osgood function. This is the equation behind the two stage ramberg osgood equation. So the key input parameters are the Young's modulus, the 0.2% proof stress, and the ultimate tensile stress, as well as these two exponents, n and m, which describe the roundedness of the stress strain curve. So material was tested in three directions, along the line of the printing in the zero degree direction, and then at 45 and 90 degrees. Coupons were cut out from flat plates, and then some of them were machined down in order to remove the surface undulations, produce a flat finish, and therefore give us machined coupons, prismatic coupons, which could, which could really tell you the underlying material properties. Whilst the as-built coupons told us about the underlying material properties, but also the influence of the as-built geometry. Coupons were sprayed with a speckle pattern prior to testing to provide features for the digital image correlation system to track during testing. You'll be familiar with uh, DIC as a non-contact measurement system. A series of digital photos are taken of the specimens. The shifts of the speckle pattern are recorded, and this is then used to obtain strains. And this is particularly important for 3D printed material because the geometric variability tends to give you more varied strain fields. And you can see an example of that in these images here. You can see the strain fields are quite banded, showing some non-uniform deformation and also some underlying um, directionality. So here's some typical stress strain curves. So you can see here in the zero and 90 degree direction, and this is for the ma machined coupons, you can see a slightly lower Young's modulus than you'd usually expect for stainless steel. Whilst for the 45 degree direction, you can actually see a higher Young's modulus than you would typically expect for this grade of stainless steel. If you look at the overall stress strain response, you can see that it's got good strength uh, both yield strength and ultimate tensile strength, and also good ductility. And then looking at some of the properties, so these are I've highlighted the Young's modulus. You can see for the zero and 90 degree directions, it's fairly similar in value, about 140,000 newtons per millimeter squared, about 25% lower than normal, whilst it's about 10% higher in the 45 degree direction. And then, as I mentioned, yield strength and strain at the ultimate tensile strength are both comparable with conventionally produced material. So why do we see this directionality? Well, we did some electron backscatter diffraction analysis, and this revealed that the material had a strong crystallographic texture because of the solidification of the printed material under a thermal gradient. What you can see in those pole figures is that for the zero and 90 degree orientations, you've got a dominant one zero zero type uh, crystal direction, whilst for the 45 degree direction, you've got more one one zero and one 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 crystal directions. The one zero zero crystal direction is the least stiff, whilst the one one zero and one 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 are stiffer. So this crystallographic texture explains why we are getting the stiffer direction in the 45 degree orientation. So having seen the influence of the printing process on the underlying mechanical properties, we then wanted to have a look at the influence of the undulating geometry. 
And you can see here some uh, typical values for the Young's modulus and 0.2% proof strength, as well as the ultimate tensile stress and strain at the ultimate tensile stress, where the as-built values from the as-built coupons have been normalized by the machine coupons. You can see that generally the reductions in uh, properties are between about 10 and 20 percent, whilst for ductility it can be a bit higher and you see this particularly for the 90 degree direction where you're pulling across the welds. Deformation tends to home in on the minimum cross section and therefore gives you a overall reduced ductility when measured over the full parallel length. And you can see that also in the, the coupons after testing. So we've got 0, 45 and 90 degree coupons. The ones that are loaded in line with the printing direction are the most ductile, 45 degrees are in the middle, and then the 90 degree coupons are the least ductile, as I said, with the deformation localizing in the minimum cross section. And this graph just shows how the mechanical properties of the as-built material, which we're referring to as effective mechanical properties, because it's not really a true mechanical property because of the influence of the geometry, normalized by the properties of the machined material on the vertical axis, reduce as the standard deviation of the thickness increases. And you can see with the, the definition of the points shown in the top, left figure, so the circles are the zero degree orientation, diamonds are 45 and the squares are 90. So the 90 degree coupons have the greatest geometric variability and you can see that there's a strong correlation between the amount of geometric variability and the resulting mechanical properties. Now the results that we obtained from this testing were input into a finer element model of the MX 3D bridge and shown to give good agreement with experimental results. And the tests that I've shown you here are all part of the testing and verification of the MX 3D bridge, which has now been open to the public in Amsterdam. So in conclusion, the use of metal 3D printing is growing across many sectors. WAM has significant potential for steel construction. We've tested 51 WAM coupons. We've found some underlying anisotropy caused by the strong crystallographic texture arising from the um, printing process. And we've also seen that the geometric undulations weaken the mechanical response particularly when loading across the welds in the 90 degree orientation. And finally, we need further research for sure to establish larger data sets to underpin design rules and safety factors for WAM stainless steel. Thank you all very much for listening.